Hey, what's up everyone? I'm doing a little bit of an unplanned video today because I've actually been sick this week and you can probably hear it, I'm still all blocked up. So I haven't been able to do my training the way that I planned to do it, which is really normal, like everybody goes through that, right? Um, but I've been doing a lot of connection with people in our UMS app and also just with people on social media asking questions. And there's a theme that's sort of come up that inspired Yanni, Phil and myself to do a podcast recording earlier today. Um, that'll go up uh, in the next, cu next couple of weeks. Blah. <laughs> so brain dead at the moment, being sick like this. Um, but it, uh, we, we, were, we were talking about the amount of people that are asking about pain or, um, you know, things that they feel in their body when they're training. And I'm not going to talk about the exact same stuff we spoke about in that podcast because we've got a whole podcast episode about that. But I was thinking more, it, it made me reflect on where I've come in the last 10 years because like I've, I've had a, actually, I was going to say a pretty big transformation. I've had a huge transformation in the last 15 years to be precise. I'm 45 now and when I was 30, I joined the army. I joined as an infantry soldier and that was very late in life to do that. But I did that because I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and I was just really going nowhere with my life that I was um, proud of and I wanted to make a big change and got out of the army and I uh, got out when I was 34 and opened Unity Gym with Yanni, uh, my brother and my friend Richard when I was 35. So that's 10 years ago now. And I started to really pursue calisthenics. I wanted to get better at calisthenics. Well, I wanted to learn calisthenics. I'd never done it before. And I, I made a conscious choice to move away from doing Kung Fu and martial arts and move into something that was more uh, more in alignment with owning a gym and you know running a gym and being that fitness professional. And shortly into that journey, I suffered a really bad injury. So I had a slap tear in my um, left shoulder first. And then 14 months later, I had a slap tear in my right shoulder. And I've come from that. I think the slap tear in my right shoulder, I'm pretty sure it was four years ago now. I've come from that to being stronger now than I was before I did the slap tears and also, um, you know, more capable, capable of more stuff. And we've made some videos on YouTube about slap tears and about my um, injury rehab journey. And it's inspired a lot of people. And we're getting a lot of people joining the UMS tribe now who have had slap tears <laughs> and who are asking questions and, you know, who really want to, you know, get better. And it inspired me to do this video, this really candid sort of talk, because I've just been reflecting on you know, what's changed for me in the past 10 years and, and how my approach to not just training, but to life and to everything in general um, has, has evolved. And, and uh, you know, I'm often training people that are younger than me. Sometimes I'm coaching people that are older than me, but this journey with slap tears with, um, has actually, probably the slap tears are the biggest one. I've had a lot of injuries, but they've really, it's really changed my approach to training and the way I do things because before the slap tears, I really felt like I was racing against the clock. I felt like I was, you know, trying to work as hard as I could to learn something that I was starting late in life. Um, you know, in my mid thirties starting calisthenics, I could definitely feel that I wasn't in my twenties anymore. And I really wanted to get as good as I could, as quick as I could. Uh, and that process led to two really bad injuries, you know, slap tears are bad injuries. And what, where I've gone from there through the rehab to where I am now, um, you know, with no injuries, haven't had any bad injuries for a long time. It's just this acceptance of, of, you know, where you are in life now or where I am in life right now. And rather than feeling like I'm trying to force myself you know, to make up for lost time or to, um, you know, to get the most out of what I can now. My approach to training now is, is much more just about the habit. And I, I still have big goals. I'm, I'm ambitious and I want to achieve a lot with my body and with, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I measure success, I guess, by work, by, tangible progress towards things that I 
that I want to be able to do. I used to always measure success by achieving a goal. So if I can do this, because when I used to do Kung Fu, there's a lot of acrobatic moves, there's forms that you do, you get belts. So success was always measured by once I got to be able to do something that I can't do now. But now I measure success more by progress. And so what that means is like, you know, where I was 10 years ago, if I got sick, when I'd start training again, I'd be like, I would really beat myself up when I was sick because I couldn't, you know, I'm like, man, I've got to be, you know, sticking to my goals and I'd train really hard even when I was sick. And, and then if, if I had to take a couple of days off when I came back to training, I'd, um, I'd work even harder at it, you know. And of course, that never really worked out well for me. I was always, uh, you know, beating myself up and, you know, the slap tears were the worst injuries that I had, but I had lots of other injuries as well. And my approach now is much more, Phil, our, our um, resident physio friend, he put it really well. And I, I can't remember if I got this exactly right because I only heard him reference this for the first time just the other day. But he said now he, he puts training into four categories and he puts everything in his life in these four categories. And I'm, I'm going to see if I can remember it. Um, category one is maintenance. Category two is... Um, I think he he called it progress. Category three was, um, I can't remember what the third, what the second and third one was, but the fourth one was optimization. So on one end you had maintenance, which is basically just not losing it, uh, losing what you've got. And on the other end you have optimization, which is like getting things perfect. I think just before that he had um, progress, so moving forward and then there was something between um, maintenance and progress. But th without hearing him say that, that's definitely how I approach things myself, which is, you know, Yanni and I have talked about with um, the UMS, the way that we teach people is there's three types of days or types of, types of workout that you have, where you have your ideal workout, your goal workout, and then your minimum workout. And your ideal workout, it's not necessarily one workout, but it's everything that you plan to do in a day. Um, so for me, my ideal workout is, is two workouts a day. It's where in the morning I do my strength and flexibility training. And then in the evening, I do a bunch of skills work like handstands and locomotion and flow and things like that. But then my goal workout is what I do on the days when I just don't have time for two workouts, which is very often. Um, and the goal workout is just my strength and flexibility workout. Um, because I know that if I get my goal workout done, I'm still going to make progress towards everything I do. Uh, it doesn't matter if I didn't get the ideal workout done. And then my minimum workout is what is the minimum to prevent myself going backwards and losing what I've already got. And the minimum workout is very, very short for me. The minimum workout is where I'll do just my warm up because the warm up prevents me losing flexibility gains and it also prevents those aches and pains sort of creeping in from old injuries and then I'll go and do on my minimum workout the amount of sets that I do it changes from day to day some days I'll do two sets of two exercises I'll just do a, like in a in an upper body workout I'll just do two sets of pull-ups and two sets of some form of a pressing exercise but I might do up to five sets. Um, it, and it just depends on the day because some, the whole, the good thing about a minimum workout is you don't necessarily have a set amount of time that you train. When you have this idea of this is my minimum workout, like as in, oh man, I'm under the pump. I don't have the time to do my goal workout. I'm just gonna do my minimum workout. And you get up and you think to yourself, all right, I'll just spend 20 minutes. I'll get my warm up done. I'll just go and do one or two sets and that'll be it. And then you, you finish all of that and you think, oh, I could do one more set. And you do one more set. And then you think, oh, I could do one more set. And then before you know it, you've done four or five sets. And then you stop there, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, but it's a really, really, that's something that it doesn't, that doesn't even prevent you from going backwards. That even moves you forward just a little bit. So, you know, this different approach that I have now, since I've had these injuries, as I'm getting older, as I'm a dad now, you know, my son turns seven next year. Um, you know, we've sold Unity Gym. We only run an online business now. It's a, it's an interesting point of reflection for me because to come through to the end of 2023, um, 
which this will be my first full year of living at the Central Coast since we moved from Sydney. We moved in February last year. Um, it feels less stressful <laughs> training like this and I'm making better gains, better progress, but I'm, I'm going easier on myself. I'm not as hard on myself anymore. And I guess the point of making this video was I put so much effort into the content that we create. And what I mean by that is the amount of time that I have in a week, <laughs> so much of it is dedicated to making content, right? Like I'm coming up with ideas for what I'm going to do, um, you know, making these videos and briefing my team over, um, you know, to edit them and, and get them the way we want and upload them, all that. And one thing that I guess I never do is just press record and share some thoughts that might be useful for you guys. Even with our podcast, Yanni and I are, actually Yanni, I should give credit to Yanni for this. He's trying to be less forced with the way that we record our podcast and less, you know, intent on we're going to cover this topic and and make it more just like a chat, like Phil and Yanni and me having a talk, um, you know, which I think we did a little bit better uh, today when we recorded them. Hopefully you guys think so. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to share some thoughts with you guys and um, see if it might help you as, it, as I'm coming out of uh, another virus, you know, you, we all get sick every year, right? Um, and living in this post-COVID world, um, I think I had COVID at least once this year. I think I've had it three, two or three times now um, that I've known about. And, you know, for anyone that's in the UMS tribe membership that uh, are asking me these questions about the way that your body feels or, um, you know, how do I come back from um, having a break from training or, or any of these things? I think one of the one of the best things that I've learned and one of the things that's worked really well for me over the past couple of years, especially since I've had a slap tear in both shoulders, is to go easier on myself and to view like achieving my goal for me now is just getting the work done and feeling that sense of progress rather than, you know, have I achieved, the, like I still have goals, of course, you know, I still have big goals that are things that I can't yet do that I'm working towards but the the sense of progress is the achievement and when I when I tick that box that keeps me moving forward and the feeling of that making that acknowledgement of this means I've achieved my goal for the day you know did I get something done did I move the needle forward even just the tiniest little bit it's just that that reframing in your mind it's just really really changes things and it's it's pretty cool it's a it's a good thing so i hope this helped you guys um hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions if there's anything i can help you with and i'll see you all tomorrow